Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 3 through 4. To the left is the King James Version. To the right is the Expanded Bible. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. So what is this saying here? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. It is not that people don't know the truth the truth about the Bible. People know the truth about the Bible, but people, some people, love to sin. So what they do, they flock to teachers, or they raise up teachers, or place on a pedestal these teachers that tell lies or twist Bible scriptures. With some people, if they want to do the wrong thing, they don't want to go to a church that is going to remind them of their sin every time they go to church. They don't want to be convicted. So what they do, they go to a church that is not going to teach against the bad things that they are doing. They just want to learn about the good side of God. They don't want to hear that you are going to reap what you sow. They want to hear that God is going to bless you by doing good deeds for people or by placing money into a church or by doing something. Skip doing right by God. There was a video that I made and I forget which one it was, but this one person, I believe I was speaking against once saved, always saved. Actually, I believe it was a comment. Yes. It was a comment that I sent on this other video, on someone else's video, and I had this one person respond to me. And what this person was saying, pretty much this person believes in once saved, always saved. And some people may know what once saved, always saved is, where you can sin as much as you always have before you came to God. And all you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ that he died for your sins. And as long as you believe in Jesus Christ, you can sin as much as you want to. You can be a... Uh, pedophile and rape all types of kids a week and as long as you believe in Jesus Christ you are still saved you get to go to heaven without obeying God's rules you can continue doing the dirt that you are doing so if you kill people every day as long as you believe in Jesus Christ you are going to heaven if you watch pornography all day long until a day you die as long as you believe in Jesus Christ you are going to heaven if <laughs> if you fight people and injure people every day all day you don't have to follow God's rules and as long as you believe in Jesus Christ 
you are going to heaven. Once saved, always saved. And that really makes me think. What about Lucifer and the third of angels that got kicked out of heaven for rebelling against God, for sinning against God? What about Adam and Eve? They sinned against God and they get kicked out the Garden of Eden. What about the Old Testament? What about the New Testament? About God cursing you for disobedience. You reap whatever you sow. What about those things there? People take grace out of context. Grace is to help us follow God's rules and regulations. Grace does not replace righteousness. It does not. If grace replaces righteousness, what is the point of the Bible? What is the point? If all we have to do is believe in Jesus Christ, what is the point of the Bible? What is the point of church? What is the point of anything if we can continue sinning as much as we always have? Why did Jesus Christ get crucified if we, if we can continue to sin? What is the point? Why would he have to die so that we can continue sinning? Before he came, people were already sinning. So you are saying that he died for our sins so we can continue to do what we were doing before? <laughs> or what people say that before, I guess, when you would sin, you would be punished. But now, since Jesus Christ died, we can sin and not be punished for it. How crazy is that? You are always going to reap whatever you sow. So my main point here in verse 3, people find teachers on purpose. People raise up teachers on pedestals that teaches or that don't teach against the bad things that they are doing. If I like to have sex before marriage, or if I like to get drunk and, and cut myself, if I really like to do those things, why would I go to a church that is going to teach against what I am doing? Why would I even go to a church in the first place if I like to do those things, which makes no sense? Like, why are you going to church if you don't want to change? People are hypocritical. They say that they want Jesus. They know how to get to him. But they get to the point where, I don't know, where they still want to attend church and sin as much as they are. I remember going in the Old Testament and the way that things would be, It says that God is the one that raises up kings. So even if the king is evil, even if the person that rules over you is evil, God is the one that places that person there. Depending upon how the people are, God is going to give you a king or place someone over you that... 
For instance, let's say everyone wants to or most people want to have sex before marriage, want to marry gays and stuff like that or do evil. What God is going to do, he is going to give you a king or a ruler that is going to pass laws or rule over you in an unrighteous way. But let's say that most people are serving God, are doing the right things. God is going to place kings and rulers over you that serve God too. So everything is going to be peaceful. So when you are evil or when most people are evil, we can honestly say that there are more people who don't serve God that do serve God. So when you are evil and you want to do whatever you want to do, God is going to give you a king or a person to rule over you that is evil. So what is happening to us now is due to people who want to live evil. God is the one that puts people in power. So these evil people that are in power is because of God. But God raised up those evil people because why? Because most of the people are evil as well. So you are going to get what you are pushing for. If you are pushing for to do more evil acts, God is going to give you what you want. Let me give you a king that is going to do much more evil for you and pass these evil laws. But it gets to the point where things get so evil that the evil people begins to get hurt as well. <laughs> so it never works out for people who chooses to disobey God. Because God is going to give you what you want. If you want to have sex before marriage and kill your kids saying that when the baby is in the womb that it is not a kid or human or whatever they say so you kill it and believe that things okay okay let me give you a king people to rule over you that are going to pass laws and more laws so more evil can come forth but when that happens things get out of hand So you want evil, but when God gives you all the evil you want, <laughs> then you come back crying back to God. That is how it always works. Verse 4. Because things always get out of hand. And when God puts, let me say this too, when God puts evil kings or rulers over you, what happens, evil gets really bad. And what happens, God punishes you based upon what is happening. Verse 4. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Now, what is the key word in verse 4? Verse 4 and 3 is pretty much saying the same things. Let me make this... Uh, Sion. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. It is not that they don't know the truth. They are going to turn their ears away from the truth. Hey, I know what the truth is, but hey, I want to do me. I want to do whatever I want to do. I want to have sex before marriage. I want to have sex with other people's spouse. I want to curse, steal, hurt people, backstab people. I want to do all those things. Yes, I know what the Bible is saying, but whatever. Let me go to this other church that speaks about grace and you never can do wrong. When bad things happen to you, not so much. <laughs> oh, my Lord. 
people turn away from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. So you turn to lies. It really makes me feel bad to hear about my sins every day. But this church, but this huge church over here, it does not condemn me for my sins. It tells me that I am a good person. That to get blessed by God, all I have to do is be kind or think of myself as being good. And I get to go to heaven because I think of myself as this good person. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth. You are doing that because you are wicked. When you know the truth, when you know how to obey God in the right way, but you choose not to do it, you are wicked. And this is why bad things continue to happen to you. And if you don't change, you are going to hell. It doesn't matter what these... Even if you go to a huge church and that pastor or those preachers say that you can't do any wrong, even when you are doing wrong, your wrong is right. When you hear that and you take heed to that, it doesn't matter what those preachers and pastors are saying. What the Bible says is what the Bible says. While you are on this earth, you have enough time to repent. You can repent while you are alive. You can repent 20 million times, if that is possible. But once you are dead, that is it. There is no repentance. There is no purgatory. So you can tell yourself lies because this right here is telling you that you know the truth. You can tell yourself all the lies you want to while you are living on this earth. But once you die, all the games are over. You can't say, well, God, my pastor told me that because of grace, I don't have to repent. I can continue doing the evil that I am doing now. Or my mom never told me the truth or whatever else. You can't blame anyone. Because the truth is out everywhere just about you can read the bible and obtain the truth so you can't blame your disobedience to god on no one else like i said while you are on this earth you can tell yourself lies all you want but once you are dead the game is over there is no more repentance i know <laughs> back when i was a kid and um I had a friend or I had friends in church and um, most of the guy friends there, like we pretty much liked to do the wrong things and we learned about hell and heaven and stuff like that, but we liked to do bad things. So we had it in our mind that we would repent at the last second as if we could figure out when we are going to die or something like that because we didn't want to like we knew the truth we knew that what was wrong and what was right to do but we did not want to do right especially i back when i was a kid And 
whenever we thought that we were going to die or something like that, like, <laughs> we would always joke about it and, you know, and say that we would repent of it and stuff, you know, repent of our sins and stuff like that. Now, there are some people that get cancer or some type of illness where they know that they have until then or a year or six months to live. Let's say that they sinned all their life or they had pride or they were doing wrong all their life. So they find out that they have cancer or some type of illness and know when, uh, not know exactly when they are going to die, but around the time period, I guess, like a general idea when they are going to die. Now, in that case there, you know, you can pretty much repent and just wait until you die. But with some people, they are in semi good health and they can get shot or just drop dead. Everyone does not get the opportunity to know around the time period when they are going to die especially when you get sick or when your doctor tell you when you are going to die. Like you have about two years to live or you have about six months to live. Everyone does not get that opportunity to know. With everyone else, we can die at any instant or any second. So my point is, since we don't know when we are going to die, we have to be ready at all times. With me, I am not worried about, to a certain extent, when God is going to come back. I want him to come back, like, now, <laughs> to be honest. I'm not so much worried about when I am going to die or what is going to happen next because I make sure each day that I am right with God each day. I even ask God like, hey, if there are any sins within me, any hidden sins, whatever else that is within me, please tell me because I don't want to think that I am doing right then next thing you know, I die. Then I find out that <laughs> I was doing this, I was doing that. I, I have all of these sins in my life. No, I want to make sure that I am right each and every day. So when, or let's say I do get shot or killed or car accident or whatever, I will be ready for my afterlife or I will be ready to go to heaven because I don't want to go to hell. So as you can see here, as I was telling you before, people know the truth. Even when I speak to people, people act like they don't know why bad. <laughs> it's not funny, but <laughs> Some people act like they don't know why bad things are happening to them, but when they speak to you, it is so obvious. Like, how don't you know why bad things are happening to you? People just choose to, to live their own way of life, even when it is wrong. So I pray that this makes sense. Repent now. You have the opportunity to repent now. You are alive now. You may not have the best type of life. So, so you may think that what is the worst that can happen to you? If you go to hell, if you go to hell, 
your life can be much more worse by far. So I pray that this makes sense. God bless.